And then we can also understand uh, from the, the, the fifth dimension of health, which is spirituality, it really has to do with our ethics, that as we begin to reconnect uh, with who we are, actually, and begin to uh, take time to be silent, and I think that's where the Zen aspect comes in, uh, of questioning the official narratives, not only in the outer world, in our society, but questioning the official narratives within my own mind, the things that I have taken in myself, to understand that in many ways our minds have been colonized by a system that's not does not have our interests at heart. Just just like a, a cow or pig or chicken is born uh, on a on a farm to be killed, They're, that farmer does not have their best interests at heart. That farmer has they're basically there to be killed and to be used as commodities and they may get fed and so forth but they're there to be killed and to be abused and to be exploited so we have to understand that if we want to be free of being exploited we have to stop exploiting other living beings and that's why uh, again it's so fantastic to realize that the way it's set up basically is we do not need to eat animal foods to be healthy i i stopped eating all animal foods back in 1980 so that's 41 years ago i have eaten no meat dairy eggs anything since then. And I have to say, I'm not the only one. Uh, there's literally millions of people who are vegans and long-term vegans on this planet. And our health is just as good and probably a lot better than the typical people eating the standard meals, so lots of meat, dairy products. And so that's the wonderful good news uh, behind this whole thing is to realize that we've been given this gift, all of us have been given this wonderful gift of a physical body that does not require any animals to suffer to get all the nutrients that we need to thrive and celebrate our lives on this beautiful earth. We've been given that gift. The problem is the wound, the great wound that we've all suffered is that we've been born into a society where from the very first moments, uh, we were forced, uh, really without our permission, we were compelled to abandon that gift, to just to forget that we ever had that, and to eat the flesh and secretions of horribly abused animals, cause them terrible suffering. And out of that violence, we continue to spin narratives of violence and uh, behaviors of violence. And that as long as we keep eating animal foods, that's not going to stop. No matter how we try to put a band-aid on this, try to create, you know, elect better uh, representatives and presidents and senators and have uh, governmental uh, agencies that will protect the environment. It never works. It doesn't work. They, everything gets captured by these forces of violence because we, the people, uh, essentially are the ones who are living in a world of mirrors. If we want the outer world to change, we have to change ourselves. We can't expect the outer world to get better if we don't get better. We have to get better. We have to, we have to wake up and stop being violent ourselves before we're ever going to find uh, that the outer world reflects that. And when we do wake up, we will find that the outer world will reflect that awakening. So this is what we're, this is the, uh, the situation that we're in right now. And I think, uh, again, we're, we're getting to the point now where it's essential that we understand clearly um, the dynamics that are going on here. So I'm going to just, again, quickly um, do one other PowerPoint here. Uh, and um, let's see, it's, um, uh, oh, here we go. So this is the, um, this is the other, uh, the other one. And um, so, so just basically, we see uh, the historic, from the historical point of view, we've got uh, this thing that happened about 10,000 years ago, which is that at the very top we start here, animals were reduced. That's when we started herding animals. It was wild sheep about 10,000 years ago in what is today Iraq. And then, uh, then a little later, wild goats. And then about 2,000 years later, wild cows. And then pretty, so there, people started herding animals. They started owning them as property. That's the beginning of herderism. I, a word I coined, which is really the core of our society today, is herderism. We herd animals. That's we don't we don't realize we're born into a herding society, but we are born into a herding society. That's that's what that's what we do. It's just 
instead of each of us, you know, with a stick going around hurting an animal, uh, we have that it's all done on a massive industrialized scale where we don't really see it. The animals are stuck away in these thinking sheds by the thousands or by the tens of thousands sometimes where they never see the light of day until they're taken out and killed. But we all support it with our dollars and so forth psychologically. So that herding started 10,000 years ago and they, and they started reducing uh, animals. Wildlife uh, was also reduced. They became pests. And so we had this separation from nature, uh, this whole trauma to animals began. That led to, went directly to a wealthy elite class of kings. Uh, so I used to teach college courses in these ancient texts. So the, and if you just read these ancient texts, like the Epic of Gilgamesh or the Iliad, the Odyssey, the ancient Old Testament writings, you see that there's these kings. Uh, these are, this is uh, by the historic period, which was about 4,000 years ago. We have the first writings finally uh, emerging. And by that time, you can see there are these kings that dominate the society. They're wealthy and powerful for only one reason. That's because they own livestock. Livestock is what? Okay, we get to the third one, capital. Animals become wealth. The word capita, where we get our word capital and capitalism means head, as in head of sheep and goats and cows. And so these animals uh, became the foundation of wealth. The more cows and sheep and goats you had, the more wealth you had. That led directly, as I said earlier, to war. The oldest word for war on planet Earth that we know of is the ancient Sanskrit word gavya. It means war, it literally means the desire for more cows. That's the oldest word for war because these kings, when they wanted to uh, have more land and have more wealth, they would start attacking each other for their livestock. And that led directly to slavery because we, we never had human slavery until we had animal slavery. And whoever lost the war, typically in the in the ancient days of these wars, when they started uh, over livestock, the animals became the property of the victors, and then the human beings became the property of the victors. So, so uh, this idea of owning other beings as property, uh, it's a, and one of the things I've I've learned, and this is very sobering, and we should all be very much aware of this is that whatever we have done to animals, sooner or later, we have done it to each other, to other human beings. So now we see it, we see this happening, right? We see, you know, the forced medication of, of billions of animals that's been going on for decades. Um, the imprisonment, the enslavement, uh, all of what, we've, what we see happening to human beings, uh, we've been doing it to animals, microchipping, so forth. So we should not be doing this to animals if we don't want to have it done to us ourselves. And then uh, that led directly to the domination of the feminine because essentially, you can't have animal agriculture without imprisoning animals, right? That's what it is. That's the definition of it. you imprison them and you kill them. Those are the two things, but there's actually a third thing, uh, which is you have to rape them. You have to impregnate them against their will. And uh, the industries use what they refer to as a rape rack to do that. So the domination of the feminine is, is absolutely endemic and in, in part of animal agriculture. You can't have animal agriculture without the domination of the feminine. So when we go back earlier than 10,000 years, we go back to a time where animals are respected, where they're mysterious and powerful cohabitants of the earth with us, where women are respected for doing something men cannot do. But animal agriculture just radically reduces the status of animals. They become mere commodities that are bought and sold. And women, by the time the historic period emerged in these herding cultures, were also bought and sold, just like chattel property, they were seen merely as breeders to be used, just the way the men used the, the animals. They bred them uh, and they bred them to, for larger animals. And so uh, they started breeding, uh, looking at, they wanted large women so their sons would be large and so forth. So this domination of the feminine uh, is part of animal agriculture. If you want to eat the animals, you want to have uh, fish sticks and French fries, uh, not French fries, but <laughs> uh, you know fried burgers. Um, this is going to, this is, you can't avoid this. This is absolutely going to happen. You're going to have the domination of the feminine and you're going to have, again, the, the role model for boys is the hard, tough, disconnected male uh, who has been forced to disconnect from his natural feelings of sensitivity and, and kindness and tenderness and gentleness and, and respect. Because you can't do, you can't, you have to have men who are hard and tough and capable of violence towards animals and towards rival herders and towards women. 
if you're going to have animal agriculture. So this is the system that we're born into. It goes back 10,000 years, which is not that long, but in that 10,000 years, we have managed to uh, unfortunately destroy most of the earth, uh, as we can see and uh, led to the, the massive deforestation, the complete destruction of the oceans. Uh, and uh, we're seeing right now the uh, body of the earth and the bodies of our children being polluted and harmed in many ways. But the thing is to understand is that it's absolutely not uh, essential because we have here, for example, uh, vegan living, uh, a, a way of ahimsa. Uh, ahimsa is the old Sanskrit word that means non-violence. <laughs>